So we're going to look at a scenario that we could use law of sines to solve. So maybe we don't have a hippo, a dragon, and looking at the length of a giant pencil, but we could apply it to different scenarios if we were trying to look and figure out the distance between uh, two objects or the length of something that we weren't directly next to. So we have our hippo and our dragon here, and using some values working with them, we can figure out a way to figure out the length of this giant pencil. So what we're going to start with is draw a baseline between the two, and that's an important part that we have to have. So looking between the two here, I have a line. They are 10 inches apart. Excuse me there, Mr. Hippo. Or, I'm sorry, Miss Hippo. Okay, they are 10 inches apart. Now, if you're going to pick and you're going to figure out the length of an object, you pick a number that's going to be nice for you, but you need to have some baseline that you're apart, and you maintain, always maintain that baseline. Now, it could have been units, could have been feet, meters, yards, but we're going to take 10 here, and I'm going to work with that. Now, the first thing I'm going to take is uh, from each of these objects, or each of these people, animals, whatever you want to call them, hippo and dragon, I can draw their line of sight to each side of the giant pencil. So, from the hippo, I can go either direction. And the dragon as well. and we actually get these two triangles that are formed by these lines of sight. Now, from here, yeah, we can't measure a line of sight, but we can actually measure the angles with them. And we could take a protractor out, and we'll have a device that lets us do this, and figure out what the angle that it opens between the two, as if the hippo was standing here, figuring out the angle between the two, or even the angle from either side of the pencil back to the dragon, figure out those angles and those are going to be key for us. Now, we have a protractor, so we're going to use that now just because we're looking two-dimensionally. And let's see, I got 40 degrees between the dragon and the left side. I have 55 degrees, dragon, or the left side and the right side. Come over here. Oh, that should be in smart the total there. The total there is 95 degrees. Over on our dragon side, looks like we're at 48 degrees. And we have 62 degrees for a total of 110. So that's, that's the values we need to collect. Now again, we can't figure out the distance between these two objects, but we can collect these angles. So each of these gave us two triangles. Let's take a look at each triangle individually. Let's first look at the triangle where we're looking to the right side. So I have 10 as my bottom side. My angle here on the left, or the right side I should say, is 95, and then a 48. So I need to figure out what the third angle is. So we got 48 plus 95 from 180 is 37 degrees. And we're going to label this side A and this side B. So we can use law of sines here to help us find A and B. So sine of, we'll start with 37 over 10 is equal to sine of 48 over A. And this becomes that A is equal to, by cross product, 10 times sine of 48 over sine of 37. In our calculator. We get that A is approximately 12.8 We'll say 3. Now, do the same thing for B. It's still going to be sine of 37 over 10 equals, this time, sine of 95 
over b. So b is going to be 10 times sine of 95 over sine of 37. We get that's about 16.6. So let's go back and label here what we have. I have 12.3, 16.6, 16.7, 6, and we found that top angle found to be 37 degrees. So now we're going to do the same thing for the left corner. So this triangle, if we just kind of sketch it to give us an idea, we have 110, we have 10 and 40. We'll call this C and D. This means our top angle will be 30. So we'll say sine of 30 over 10 equals sine of 110 over C. C becomes 10 times sine of 110 over sine of 30. So C is approximately 18.8. And now for D, sine of 30 over 10 equals the sine of 40 over D. So D equals 10 times sine 40 over sine 30. We get about 12.9. So let's go back here. We got 12.9, 18.8, and 30 degrees. So how can we now use this to figure out the length between the two? Well, we know we're going to have some length that's here that's going to serve as a side. We know if we have a new piece of paper, the key that we have here is this is the unknown we want to find. Where does that triangle need to go to use something that we can solve? Now, one option we could think of is I can make this triangle, or I can make this triangle and use the values that I have to help me solve. So let's just say I went in this direction. So I'll go this way. I have the 18.8 and the 12.3. Well, what else do I know there? I got a 55. Is that the angle? So maybe that could be my way to get to my solution. Uh, I might have to then figure out some other angles to help me solve. It looks like I need an angle over here and maybe something involved with the way this problem is set up. I could get to that. Or if that doesn't work for you, realize we could also go in this direction. And we got x, 12.9, 16.6, and 62 degrees as the triangle that's over here. Well, I'm not going to tell you that yet. This is at least the start or the idea for what we need to go. I'll add a second part to this where we actually finish the solution, but at least gets us started because my class is you're going to go out and we're going to try this and we're going to try to figure out some lengths using this idea. So if it's not clear to how you put it together, not clear the two parts that you need, a reminder again, we need to figure out a distance, a baseline between our hippo and our dragon. We chose 10 inches. We chose the angles between the endpoints that we wanted to measure, the two points we wanted to measure between, the angle from our, if we're looking at the hippo, from the dragon to each corner, and then the reverse from the other side. So it's collecting that data, collecting those angles, and we go out there, and then we can go back and play with it.